the last piece to the recording puzzle. All of that. All, all of that set up just so I can have crisp audio. Oh, you nosy thing. Oh, you nosy thing. Now, I don't think I've ever showed this off in a video before, or at least a video I have uploaded. Now, this garage, I'd like to declare the uh, trap garage or trap dungeon. This is where a lot of stuff goes down in terms of my parties and stuff since I don't do them in the house. And man, I really can't see shit in here. Let me get out my big boy light. Oh wow, the big boy light is on and holy crap, my car is dirty. So since we're doing two different things today, we're gonna be also obviously putting in the cold air intake. We're also going to be um, slapping in a new hood pin release, which I have in this box as well, if I can find it. So here's the original, it's just plastic. Uh, I'm not shocked it broke, I got it replaced for under 100 bucks just for it to break the same day. Same day, so we're gonna be installing this one. Solid metal over cheap plastic. Got this on Amazon, link will be below. Just goes on with two hex nuts. Tightens over the cable, we'll see how difficult that is to install later. But before I do anything, before I move this car out to the outside world, I'm gonna close the garage door and get some proper audio of the stock air intake. So we can get a good before and after. The car's already warmed up, so it's not gonna be a cold start. Let's get her. As you can see, I use a pair of vice grips locked onto the cable to release it. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, she's a little dirtier than I was expecting. I have been traveling a lot. I have been to New Jersey. Uh, I bounce between New Jersey and Pennsylvania for work, so I'm really not shocked at the condition. <laughs> So what we're gonna be replacing today and first pulling out is the air box, take off the mass airflow and sensor, all the tubing and everything else. Removing some bolts in the back of this box, which I'm not sure the size, but we'll get there in a second. And then removing everything else. I might even take out the battery just to have some extra room. <sighs> battery is out. Wish there was a handle. Now we can go ahead and start pulling this apart. This just snaps off like that, and I like how that's kind of warped. I wonder what did that. Next, what I'm going to be doing is removing the fuse box. Not that it's necessary, but there is a bolt directly underneath that we need to get access to, and I bet I can get access to it with an extension something else, but I'm going to be honest, I don't want to fight it. So that top piece of plastic right by that uh, brown rusty tab, push that piece of plastic in and you lift up on three sides. This side doesn't have one. Up and out she goes. All I'm gonna do is set it out of my lane so I can get at this back bolt. Under the fuse panel I removed is that one bolt I was talking about. And then on the opposite side, that bolt down there and that bolt on that side I just showed you is the only two holding this in. So, I'm gonna be honest, 90% of everything that comes after this didn't go to plan because my car, <laughs> like for example, or later on in the video for instance, I remove a clamp, right? The clamp doesn't, I, I don't even think I can, the video even does it justice. The amount of rust on 90% of the clamps, bolts, and parts I removed off my car, if your car is from the north like mine, you might want to watch out. The kit comes with everything to replace everything you take off, keep in mind, but, I mean, if I just keep going a few f frames, I mean, just, ooh. Shorten the video up a little bit, let me go ahead and simplify it. So after everything is removed, this is what you have in total. This should be the whole solid piece as if you were to remove it in one solid piece. However, you can remove it in multiple pieces and make it a lot easier on yourself. Now after I was able to remove those two bolts I stated previously, this whole piece here is only connected by one clamp, if not multiple. In my case, I had no clamps. You're just able to really snap the pieces apart, pull the hose off, and then with those two bolts removed, you can just remove this whole piece, and in the video I even already had this little thing off. Now if these two pieces free from the car, I say two because I guess this little plastic thing is separate, you can go ahead and throw them away or store them, keep them, whatever you want to do with them. 
What we're left with is the main air box with the air filter, some extra tubing that connects to the throttle body, as well as some other tubing that connects to other parts of the car, as well as the mass air temperature sensor, I believe. Now, the HPS kit comes with a digital, very intuitive instruction manual. But to give you a better visual representation of where things kind of go, for instance, you can kind of see how things line up. For instance, this piece of tubing is now connected to the HPS. It just slid off the tubing, slid over the new tubing on the HPS intake. I went a lot more in depth with this video, but if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If not, follow the HPS instruction manual if you're using this as a tutorial. It is very helpful and it helped me get this complete and finished for you guys. some gas.